We're sitting here with um, Chef Jose Andres, who's been tire tirelessly working since the hurricane passed Puerto Rico. He's been feeding thousands of people across the island. And we basically want to talk to him about what that entails, what that means, and what he needs to be able to continue this job. Huh. Well, we began like uh, uh, almost two weeks ago, three, two Mondays ago. Uh, I arrived to San Juan with a lot of dreams of trying to help some people, and I went to Jose Enrique and Santurce, my good friend, where he already was probably the first chef that began feeding anybody. Jose Enrique has a big heart and, and his uh, sister, Carla. So they were the first people very much giving food away to bring the spirits up in the heart of San Juan. That to me is kind of Santurce. So, Monday kind of we end almost with 1,500, 2,000 meals. Right. Tuesday became three, 4,000. It became eight. By Friday, we were cooking 20,000 meals a day. By Sunday, we ended with more than 25,000, and we had a movement. We had a movement of uh, mm -hmm. volunteers. We had a movement of food trucks. We had a movement of who is who of the best chefs of Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. We had people that they only didn't want to meet. They didn't want to talk. They only wanted to cook and feed. And because the word spread out that we were feeding people, we began getting orders, like a restaurant. And we began getting customers. And every time we got orders, we began kind of signing a, a, a relationship with every one of our customers. And since then, we've been feeding every one of them. You, you mentioned the importance of using local restaurants, of activating the economy that way. Can you please talk about that a little bit? Well, one of the things we began doing, we, we got some of the best food trucks in San Juan. Way too many to name them all, but to me, heroes. Uh, that without much, they just came. Uh, I say, I need food trucks to feed people, and, and they began doing it. But then we realized that we were going to do it for a long time. And I told them, you know, you cannot be doing this for, for free. You are a small business owner. It costs a lot of money to the gas, the, your time. You, uh, and, and, and we began kind of hiring them. My NGO was receiving money. They're like, how much to have your food truck? Mm -hmm. At the end, it's a business transaction. And then it's the way we activate it. But it's unfair to leave it that way. Because that's no business transaction. They were doing it before from their heart. Mm -hmm. But it's okay that it's compensated. Uh, that's why when we talk about federal funds, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. But usually federal funds, usually things come from far away. And I always said, why? If we can uh, activate the local economy in the process of feeding the people that are in need in Puerto Rico, this is a one plus one is three. And this is what World Central Kitchen and Chefs for Puerto Rico are doing. We got a big partner from the business uh, side, Ramon Leal and his organization, Asaje. There was business people, mentality, working alone a little bit, but slowly trying to get the best of the federal government. Mm -hmm. But Asaje, Ramon Leal, and everybody, uh, Alberto from Coca-Cola, Alberto, mm -hmm. uh, Alberto de la Cruz from Coca-Cola, uh, and so many others, all the business people came to one meeting we organized in AC, Marriott, I think it was Wednesday, everybody came. And it was very beautiful to see that the private sector came together to start being quicker than even the federal government. Mm -hmm. And this is not bad. Sometimes we ask too much from the federal government. Nobody knows how to activate than the private sector. Sure. So that's what we did. And the good news is that Today, probably, we already reach over 50,000 hot meals a day. The good news is that tonight, Fajardo is activated. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing between five and 10,000 more meals right in Fajardo. That Mayagüez is about to be opening. That Manati, we're going to do another central kitchen. We are activating the perimeter of the island and then hopefully a couple more in the center. Okay. And by the end of next week, we will be able to be putting out there more than 100 plus thousand hand meals a day. How many, that kitchen, between, how many kitchens do you have? Right now we have three kitchens. Kitchen, okay. We have uh, one led by, uh, we have the one at the convention center, another smaller one, which is the restaurant of Chef Pinero. Uh -huh. 
uh, Mesa 234, with, with supported also with an amazing local NGO called Ados Manos, uh -huh. uh, Lulu and company. But we are working as one. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. We are working and when we came as World Central Kitchen, we are really embracing the chefs for Puerto Rico and, and we are all organized. We, we, we are quick at responding to phone calls of need, quicker than the federal government can. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. That's why we are private sector. We know how to move quick. Now you mentioned the fact that the governors talked about bringing in food, and you're saying that local restaurants are perfectly capable of well, producing. I'm, I'm not. I'm not criticizing anything the governor announced because it, it's an information sure. that's probably done through FEMA and or Red Cross. But to me, bringing food from the outside world is no good news. I think I, if I will stop that. I will empower the local companies, uh, the local catering companies, the local food production companies, the local bakeries, to make sure that as much food that we're gonna be delivering for the next 20, 21 days until we stabilize the island, that all the food is produced, cooked, and delivered by Puerto Ricans, for Puerto Ricans, and in the process, you are activating the local economy. Sure. We cannot wait 60 days to activate the economy. The economy should be activated as we are bringing hope and food and help to people. That's the right way to do it. Activate as many local businesses as you can. Sure. The private sector in the island, I know they're ready. There's plenty of restaurants out there. Chili's is a chain that is everywhere. And the restaurants, some of them had to close. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you talk to Chili's, which by the way is run by Ramon Leal, they, he can activate two or three or four restaurants, different parts of the island, just providing meals for the locals. What are you doing? Activating the local mm -hmm, economy, mm -hmm. employing the local workforce, not leaving the young men and women of Puerto Rico at home without doing anything. We need to activate them. The federal government, hopefully they are the ones helping in these moments. That's why the federal government is there. That's why FEMA was created. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure that more money stays in the island that leaves the island. And less people leave, because that's the other problem. People are leaving because they don't have a job, because they have nowhere to go. Uh, we, we, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say that in the wrong way, because Puerto Rico is as American and any other state in America. But this is almost like a refugee crisis to a degree. If we don't take care of the people of Puerto Rico, people will have to leave. And obviously it's not refugee crisis because it's just Americans going from the island, going to, 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 to America hard. Mm -hmm. But people usually don't want to leave their land. When they leave their land is because they see no hope. So for me, will be priority, priority to every single relief that this is still happening. I have a big plan on my own, but it's other plans that at the same time I'm trying to put all together into one big map so we are all working as one unit, mm -hmm. not as different units. Mm -hmm. But I will be empowering the local population, the local young chefs, all the volunteers I have. I'm right now going through a, a process because they are volunteers, because we began without money and without budget just paying everything out of pocket well, to see if I can even find a way to be giving them like a bonus because mm -hmm. I have people they've been volunteering for two three weeks and you know one thing they're doing a big service to America sure. they're doing a big service to Puerto Rico and many of people are young people they have big heart but you know what they should be compensated and I'm trying to find creative ways that it's not gonna be the same as a salary but at least give them something that I'm going through the process of it precisely that, okay. how in the process of giving aid, we can be empowering locally businesses mm -hmm. that will keep making this island a successful island. If we don't do that, the debt this island is being, sometimes because outside forces, sometimes maybe because no well-run practices, but now is the moment to start helping Puerto Rico maybe move out of the debt no getting further into them. Mm -hmm. You're Puerto Rican now, you know that, right? <laughs> I've been always Puerto Rican. I came here in 1992 when I was uh, a younger boy and and uh, remember dancing salsa until late in Peggy Sue. I don't even know if it's still open. No, and, it isn't. <laughs> and then Isadora. Uh, mm -hmm. And I always loved this island. My daughters learned how to scuba dive in this island. I have a lot of friends in this island. But even if I had friends in this island, uh, I will be here too. So, 
it helps I already had friends and it's been a it's been a beautiful thing uh, watching Puerto Ricans coming to take care of Puerto Ricans and this story needs to be told better because I don't think people are really aware now when when our team of volunteers and army arrive anywhere you will see from music celebrations to to blessing by the local father at the church to clappings to it's beautiful to see what has happened it's a movement that one day somebody is going to have to tell the story but when my teams come back from the different parts of the island um, it's fascinating you know for you to understand mm -hmm. the rich of wall central kitchen um, again volunteers helping volunteers we've been feeding people in Arecibo, in Barceloneta, in Bayamón, in Caguas, in Carolina, in Cataño, in Calle, in Ceiba, Corozal, Dorado, Florida, Guaynabo, Maco, Juncos, Lajas, Lares, Las Piedras, Loiza, Luquillo, Manatí, Maya, Güez, Moca, Morovis, Naranjito, Paella, Paella, Paella can not be a, a city. No, well, because Somebody we are doing Paella. paella. <laughs> Ponce, Rio Grande, Rio Piedras, San Juan, Toa Alta, Toa Baja, Trujillo Alto, Vega Alta, Villalba. It's more than 46,000 meals alone yesterday. Wow. We are days away from touching every single corner in the island and um, what I want to make sure is that we get to these hundred thousand plus hot meals a day quicker rather than later because I don't like anybody go home without thinking we took care of them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank guys. you for your time.